Many times we show long-term and short-term movements. You might have heard about the terms trend or seasonality. For example, what is the trend of the number of smartphone users over the years? Is it increasing or decreasing over the years? What is the trend of the number of internet users over the years? There are also some short-term variations that are often driven by seasonal factors. For example, the sales of clothes increases during the festive seasons. The flight fares usually remain low during the middle of the week and driven high during the weekends because of high demand. In this video, I'm going to particularly give you an overview about the components of the time series, which will also help you to learn forecasting techniques like horse winter in the later part of this lecture series. Every time series has one of these four components, trend, seasonal component, cyclical component, and random or irregular components. A trend is the general tendency of a data to increase or decrease during a long period of time. While seasonal variations are short-term rhythmic movements occurring in a data due to seasonal factors over a span of less than a year. Some series even have a cyclical component. These variations are long-term rhythmic movements occurring in a data over a span of more than one year, example a business cycle. Now this is the difference between seasonal variations and cyclical variations. Seasonal variations are short-term rhythmic movements, while cyclical variations are long-term rhythmic movements. Seasonal variations are observed over a span of less than a year, while cyclical variations are observed over a span of more than a year. Finally, random or irregular components are variations that are not regular variations and occur due to purely random reasons. The components, trained, seasonal component, and cyclical components are also known as the deterministic part of a time series, while the irregular component is known as the non-deterministic part of a time series. To better understand these concepts, let us consider this example. This graph right in front of you is the classic Box and Jenkins airline data. This time series records the monthly totals of international airline passengers between 1949 to 1960. From this graph, we can clearly observe a long-term upward trend. This graph also gives a clear indications of the presence of seasonality. The demand is much lower in the months of January, February, March, and December, while the demand is at its peak in the month of July and August. Now, if you remove this trend from the series, then this will leave you with a series without a trend, which will look much like this one. In this graph, the trend is a flat horizontal line, which means there is no trend. However, this graph has seasonality. Now, if you remove the seasonality as well from the graph, then that will leave you with a component which is really hard to determine. We call this component a random or irregular component. So, a time series like this one can be decomposed into three different components, trend, seasonality, and random. If we join back these components, you will find the series itself. But now the question is, how do we put these components together? There are two ways to do this. The first way is to add all these components together to get the series. We call this model as the additive time series model. However, an additive time series model doesn't show seasonality with increasing or decreasing amplitude. Here the waves have nearly the same amplitude. The second way is to multiply these components to get the series. We call this model as the multiplicative time series model. This model may be better replicate the original time series as it can account for increasing or decreasing seasonal patterns. So in additive time series model, we add all the components to get the series, while in multiplicative time series model, we multiply all the components to get the series. The next video is going to be very interesting. We're going to read a time series data in R and see how do we decompose the time series data into its components like trend and seasonality. We will also see what would happen to the time series if you remove those components from the series. So see you in the next video.